In this step, we're gonna take a look at how you properly do automatic UV mapping, which can be really useful to get your textures looking right pretty quickly. So assuming that you've got your corks looking bang on from the previous step, we're now ready to turn our attention to the window. So we need to get our texture looking good on here, but before we do that, we need to make the material for it. So we're gonna go into our hypershade for that. Make sure you've cleared your workspace and we'll create ourselves a brand new AI standard surface. We'll give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this one wood, I think. So M underscore wood, because I think I'm gonna use it on the pillars as well. And then we need to start with a clay preset and then we'll bring in our texture. So we'll bring in the color. like so, and we're gonna use T underscore wood diffuse for that. And then we need to bring in our roughness. So that's gonna be a file again, and we're going to use T underscore wood roughness for that one. Now we just need to attach our normal map. So we'll go to bump mapping, click on the checker button, tell it we want to attach a file. And then we're going to say we want tangent space normals. Click on the bump value here, choose a file, and that's gonna be T underscore wood underscore N for normal. There we go, that's doing what we want it to. And now we'll apply that completed wood material to all the pieces over here that are made of wood. So those are three pieces. Okay, so we're done with the hypershade for now, so we'll get it out of the way, and now we need to sort out the UV mapping. So in my case, lots of the wood grain is at least running in the correct direction, but not all of it. You can see we've got problems on this one here with some extreme stretching. So we're going to sort this out, hopefully, with some automatic UV unwrapping. We're going to start with this bottom piece here. And before you do an automatic UV unwrap, you need to get rid of these transforms here. I'll show you why. If I do an automatic UV unwrap now, and I'll show what that looks like in the UV editor, everything's pretty much square. But if you look at our object, it's much longer than that. So what we'll do is we're going to click on that and we're going to go to modify freeze transformations and that gets rid of all the transforms from it. And now we're gonna do our automatic projection. Let's pop it into object mode to see how it came out. So I can see that I've got wood grain pretty much running in the wrong direction now. So that's something that I'm gonna have to fix. And I'm gonna do that in the UV editor. So you can see that Here's the main ones that I'm concerned with at the moment. So I'm going to go into shell mode and select one. I'm going to press E on my keyboard to turn on my rotate tool. And then whilst holding J, and that will turn rotation snapping on, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Like so. What I'm going to do for the next one is I'll select this one. And instead of using the rotate tool, I can go into transform for this one. And just choose to rotate it 90 degrees there. And I'll do the same for these two as well. So you can see you've got different options. Now at the moment they're overlapping, which is not ideal, but it will be fine when I'm done. I just need to get them oriented the right way for now. So now let's have a look at how that's coming out. Yeah, so the wood grain is too big, and that's a scaling issue with my UV map, which I'll fix later. But the wood grain is definitely running the right way. I'm not too worried about the end pieces. Next, we'll do this piece in the middle. So let's get rid of these transforms. So we'll do modify freeze transformations, and then we're gonna put on our automatic UV. See how that's come out? Not bad. That might be something that I come back to later. And we're gonna end with this piece here. So let's get rid of our transforms. So modify freeze transformations. I'm also gonna delete the history from this one delete by type history and then we'll do our automatic UVing on it see how that came out not too bad you can see the main issue I'm having is the text identity is all off so we'll see if we can go about sorting that out so what I'm gonna do is select all three pieces and go into my UV editor not that that's working let's try again so one one, two, three. So here are all my UV shells, and I want to get these laid out. So what I'm gonna do for this is I'll just close my transform here, make sure that I'm in shell mode, select all the shells that are there, and we'll lay them out. This now keeps them in scale relative to one another. 
And what I'm going to do from here is just turn my scale tool on and I'm going to make them much bigger and that's going to make the wood grain look smaller in turn. It's also going to tile them. Let's try that. So if we go into object mode here, yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Try and get the lighting from a nicer angle. That's better. So that for me will do. There are better ways of UV mapping that, but as I wanted you to get comfortable with automatic UV mapping, that's how I've decided to do it for that piece. If I was doing this for real, I'd have used a combination of probably automatic unwrapping and some planar projection as well. In the next step then, we're going to just up the complexity of UV mapping one more time, and we're gonna do that on some parts of the table. So that might end up being a slightly longer step. But we'll then save some time because after that we're going to look at how you can duplicate UV maps so you don't have to do it for every piece of the table. Okay then, I will see you in the next step for some more materials and UV mapping. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.